What's up, Blueberries, and welcome to another episode of Learning Dust. In today's episode, we're going to be looking at the Glente Militia Starter Fit. So as you can see here, I've made some modifications to it, um, mostly just by adding another basic armor plate. Let's get in and take a look at it. So you can see I'm running the Militia Assault Rifle, Militia Submachine Gun, and I've changed it around just slightly, so I've added an extra armor plate because buffer really matters when you're a new player. And then because it's the Militia Assault Rifle and you tend to run through ammo pretty quickly, I've added the Advanced Nano Hive. Now, this is a new, this is a character that has less than a million skill points. So all of this is within reach of a new player. Um, I've specifically uh, chosen to do this because I want you to demonstrate that it is possible to play a good game with a low skill point character and not just that you have to have a, a ton of skill points to do so. So as you can see here, um, I, I've chosen the Nano Hive. It's a great set of skills. Let me go in and show you just real quickly. So 840,000 skill points. As you can see, I've got some one point in the armor. Um, I've gone for Nano Circuitry 4 so I can have a repairing Nano Hive. Now, unfortunately, I don't have my engineering and electronics up, so I can't fit that repairing nano hive anymore with the changes that have occurred to the armor plates. They're much harder to fit. You have to have better fitting skills to make that work. So I don't have that. And that's why I've chosen to go with the militia um, armor repairer so that I can have a little bit more sustainability All right, awesome. So this group here is communicating with each other. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll join up with them or if I'll just kind of play solo and let my point... Oh, man. So I came in in the wrong fit here. So what I'm going to have to do is try to get to that supply depot and switch it out. I don't normally play with the assault rifle. I play with the combat rifle as my main kind of assault. Uh, I like the burst... I like um, capabilities on it. It's got a good range. But for the assault rifle, I tend to run it like I run the combat rifle. So I burst fire a lot. I try to maintain control. I aim down the sights quite a bit. So let's talk about briefly about the assault rifle. The assault rifle is um, a better weapon now than it has been in a long time. With the hot fixes that have gone out, it's received a bit of a buff in terms of both its damage and its range. So I actually recorded this episode about four weeks ago. And uh, at the time I started some commentary and it struggled. between. This is the first time I've played with the assault rifle this match since I they made the changes. And it feels a lot better. Just going back and listening to my old commentary, I could definitely tell this round that the assault rifle is in a much better position than it was. It's still going to struggle a little at range and both long range and close range. And let me explain real quickly. So, because it can be outranged by the combat rifle, scrambler rifle, and the rail rifle, you have to be very careful about it being very far away, letting enemies engage you in their optimal range, because it's likely going to be outside of your optimal range. At the same time, if you get too close to an enemy with a shotgun or an HMG, they're going to be out to out DPS you. So you need this to be, for, for example, the HMG probably has an uh, a max effective range of about 40 meters. Now I know that's outside of its numerical effective range, but with the proficiency skills and whatnot, you're probably going to want to stay somewhere around 30 to 40. And that's going to help protect you from shotguns and HMGs. 
But at the same time, you don't have much more range than that. Your max effective range is somewhere in the 60s uh, meter range. While rail rifles have a max effective range of about 100 meters. That's difficult for this balancing act of staying within that 40 to 60 meter range ideally is a difficult balancing act for new players. Because knowing the ranges, knowing where people are, knowing about the battlefield well enough to know how to stay at that range is pretty difficult. But if you're going to try the assault rifle, it's in a better position now. And so long as you don't encounter that heavy up close or the shotgunner up close, you're going to be able to do a pretty decent amount of damage. Now, as you've probably seen by now, I would recommend doing some burst fire. If you can control your aim while tapping the trigger, then the burst fire will prevent the assault rifle from getting to its its most um, uncontrollable state. So the assault rifle builds... Well, that guy went down pretty quickly. The assault rifle builds recoil as, as you continue to hold down the trigger. So if you find yourself where it's the recoil is unmanageable, you'll just want to let off the trigger and kind of reset that cycle and then start firing again. Burst firing with this weapon can also get you slightly higher rates of fire. At the same time, there are going to be instances where you'll want to just hold down and just let let loose. So as you play with it more, you'll find that nice balance. But personally, throughout this match, I found myself just kind of burst firing like I would with the combat rifle. So the combat rifle and the rail rifle both have much more recoil. Um, and so, and in many ways, it feels like with the hotfixes, they've reduced the recoil pretty significantly. Uh, I know they toyed with the assault rifle a couple patches ago, or last patch, and they just added some insane recoil to the lower variants. And now I don't feel that as much. So, so you'll notice there I, I didn't even try to aim it. At certain, uh, certain while I, I like and I prefer to aim, when I get in that close quarter situation and they're strafing around quite a bit, I really like, I really just hit fire. It's, uh, you're going to miss a little bit more shots, but at the same as when compared to being at that range, but at the same time, um, it helps you accommodate the fact that they're strafing a lot more. Now, the assault rifle is a plasma-based weapon, meaning that it does bonus damage to shields, but uh, reduced damage to armor. So, pairing it up with something like the submachine gun is a great combination. You've seen me use it a couple times already, to where you can reduce their shields, and if you've got a heavy or something in with a lot of armor, you can switch to that submachine gun at, at, if you're at close range, and you'll be dealing similar or even more damage. Now some things to consider if you're starting with the Galente and you want to stick with their racial weapons. The assault rifle is going to perform much better if you get some points in its support skills early on. Now specifically I'm thinking about the sharpshooter skill, the one that reduces bullet spread. Now I think I've heard many people say there is a balance um, and if you get it too high too quickly, you might find that the gun has become a little too accurate for hip fire. Well, not, not so much for hip fire, but just that when, you're, when you are hip firing, when you are trying to engage somebody in that sort of dance of death, uh, there's a time where you want bullet spread. And some people have complained in the past that they find that with a lot of sharpshooter skill, they can't... Uh, that it has become a little too accurate, and so the, the bullets aren't spread out enough to accommodate uh, their own human error. But a few points in Sharpshooter can really kind of tighten up that spread, make it a little bit better at range, and um, you'll have less bullets miss. So if you're a really accurate shot naturally, you'll want to, uh, to take a look at those as well. Um, Thus far, I really haven't, in the match, I really haven't had to use my nano hives. Now, I have been close to Supply Depot, but 
that's kind of rare. Uh, and so I'm a little, I've, I was a little surprised at how little I used the, the nano hive for this particular match. Now, one of the things you've kind of seen me do here is use an LAV as a mobile cover point. I think I've mentioned it in the past, but horizontal cover and vertical cover aren't created equal in this game. So my enemies now have vertical cover, meaning in order to fire at me, they pretty much have to move their entire hitbox out behind that cover. But horizontal cover allows me to conceal most of my hitboxes of my hitbox and only expose the top little bit so my head shoulders this is giving me oh and in this case I should have just kind of moved away once I knew that forge was out but that's definitely a tactic that you could use uh, is an LAV you kind of turn it so that when you hop out you've got the LAV between you and the enemy and then you use the hood of the vehicle as that that cover and um, you'll have a mobile horizontal cover machine that you can just position and use wherever you need it. Most of the cover you'll find in the game is vertical, but the best cover in this game is horizontal because the the way they've set up where you perceive and shoot from is the top of your head. Now, most games, they have moved that down to the lower chest area, but... Um, in this game, they haven't, and so if you can, you'll be able to see and shoot over cover and pretty much just have your head exposed. So if you ever see an instance where where somebody, although you see, well, Duke's a hazard right there, where, where you see just their head and the bullets are like coming from the cover or coming from their head, that's what's happening. Is It only, the game only looks like it's shooting from the gun, but uh, you can shoot... And that's what I'm doing right here. I'm using this this ledge and hill to act as a little bit of vertical cover. Now it's not too great. If somebody ends up flanking me from the left to the right, uh, I'm I'm doomed. But since most of the enemies are at delta, I can just kind of pop up enough to be able to shoot. But most of my hitbox is protected. So using cover effectively is really important in this game, especially. Um, well, I guess it all. That's really going to help you play better um, and have more success is if you're able to utilize the cover, the terrain, to your advantage. And knowing uh, gives you the power. So here I'm getting low on ammo. So for first, and I don't even get to use it. I have to admit, I didn't even see that one coming. Uh, props to Mr. Red Dot SL. So I'm going to come back in. So now that we've kind of covered the Galente um, weapon, now they don't have a submachine gun uh, version in the game, and their pistol is an ion pistol, which isn't really that great uh, at the moment. Uh, it has too much of a spread. For it, its fast-firing nature, it's just um, you're going to have more spread and more uh, what do you want to call it? it you, you can fire it way faster than it's accurate. And that's that's an issue. So I haven't played with it much, but when I did, it was a, it was very difficult sidearm to use. So it, as far as the militia frame goes, the militia Galente frame is in a great position with three low slots and plenty of fitting... Less so now that they've changed the armor plates, but it's still in a good position. As you can see, I've gone... It's hard to tell with my armor now, but I, I am repping internally. And I have an armor repair to help me. So I have about five hit points of repping a sec. Um, this allows me to have a lot of sustainability and still have a pretty good buffer. I think I have a total of about 50 or so... Or 500 or so hit points. And with an extra armor plate, that would be even better. So if you find yourself needing that buffer more, definitely go with the three armor plates. It will kind of re it will reduce your uh, mobility a little bit. 
So I find that uh, a pretty good balance once you get to a point where you've, you're starting to survive your first firefights uh, is to add that repair into that third slot. Now, Amar, which we'll cover tomorrow, is the other armor tanker, and they are not in a good position. Like, the best armor tanker at low levels is definitely the Galente. And it's in, in part due to their slot layout, and in part due to the fact they have that internal rep. Um, you are going to be a bit slower with armor, both in terms of your strafing speed and in terms of your ability to move around the battlefield. Armor plates, when you start stacking them, uh, will kind of impact your rotational speed as well. It's less significant than it used to be, but I can still tell when switching between a heavily tanked uh, he heavy or medium class and uh, the lighter sh tanked shield versions. It shouldn't be too noticeable. I didn't really even notice it at all this match. Um, I normally play our shield scouts, so... I was quite impressed with the fact that two armor plates didn't really alter my mobility too much on the battlefield, my rotational speed. So, like any anything, there's there aren't too many specific tactics, I would say, for the the Galente frame itself. Just tactics that you'll use um, for any of the frames, such as moving from cover to cover, maintaining situational awareness. Uh, checking your six often and was saved by the bell on that one right there so I hope that this has helped you give get an insight into effectively using um, armor tankers the Galente militia frame and specifically the assault rifle um, it's in a good position right now and uh, I've really actually enjoyed it and I haven't said that about the assault rifle in a long time so, as you can see here, uh, this was a really good match. This was a rare match. I didn't see... I don't think I saw any prototype suits. There were some prototype weapons on the battlefield, but this was definitely an exception to where most people were playing with basic and advanced gear. Uh, and, and so I think you could tell. The, the, my performance with a low SP character was probably a little bit better than it otherwise would have been had there been a lot of prototype gear on the battlefield, but... Uh, I hope it at least gives you a clue that, yes, it is possible to play well. As always, my name is Alton Hilt, and I will see you in the sandbox.